Hey everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Gesaffelstein. So, as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And yeah, let's dive in. So I have this thing in front of me, and I also have this little bonus thing over here that I'm going to talk about. But the first thing I'm going to show you is the kick, which sounds like this. So it's just like a nice, punchy, kind of like simple drum machine kick. Um, I just have it going through a little bit of a saturator to beef it up a bit. I'll show you. Here's without... And then with the saturator, so on the saturator, I just have a little bit of drive, and then I use the analog clip settings to kind of dial it in and turn the bass frequency down and turn the depth up. The next thing we have here is this little hi-hat, which is actually just Ableton 606 core kit. So, yeah, I just took the Ableton 606. If you have any version of Ableton, this comes with it, so you've got it. Um, but I just took this, and I took this combo hi-hat here. I didn't use any other ones. You can see it's just like a straight line. I just have this little thing. I feel like this just adds to the groove nicely. You can hear when we turn it off, it feels like something is kind of missing in the high end. So yeah, um, and then for processing on that, I just use this auto filter so you can, here's without it. And then with. It just gives it like a little bit more of like a lo-fi, kind of like darker, more textured sound. By cutting off that like very high high end and then adding that little resonance boost there. Yeah, it just gives it like that kind of more lo-fi sound. Then the next thing we have here is the clap slash snare, which sounds like this. And it's three layers. It's this one, which is sort of like an old school drum machine type of sound. This little clap, which is just like a nice clap. And then it has a little bit of reverb and a saturator. So here's without anything. And then the reverb. And then that saturator just comes in and beefs everything up and then sort of ties the whole thing together. And then finally, we just have this snare, which is just like a nice snare with a little bit of reverb on it. And this is mostly just there for punch. Um, and then in, on the group, I have the saturator. You can hear it just kind of helps to glue everything together. This is something that Gustavo Shine definitely does in his music a lot. Like, adding this, this group saturation or distortion to these claps and snares really helps to sort of glue them together. And then the last drum thing I have here is just this 808 cymbal pretty simple it just kind of adds to the intensity and then i have it side chained to the kick so then on the drum group here we have some processing as well i have a bit of a reverb here it's very subtle i'll show you if i turn the dry wet up it's just adding a little bit of like resonance to the drums and it makes them sound like i said just a little bit more resonant and a little bit more kind of roomy um so then i have a little bit of saturation on there and then just this OTT, so the saturator is just, yeah, very subtle, not too much drive, and I played around with the analog clip a little bit. And then the OTT is just to make the drum sound a little bit more compressed and more, like, metallic and kind of just textured. I turn the high end up a bit and turn the amount down. If I turn the amount all the way up, you can hear. That's sort of, like, what it's doing, and then I just have it on 22%, so it's just not doing that too much. Um, so then the next thing I'll show you are these little bass stabs here. Um, the ones I'm talking about are these ones. So the way that I made these is basically they're all pretty much the same thing with just a few different things. Um, it's basically just some white noise and operator going into a bandpass filter with a very high resonance um, that's tuned to the key. And yeah, so the way that I did this was basically I have a bandpass filter here, turn the resonance all the way up, and then if you right click on frequency, it'll do play by key. So you can set it basically so that it'll be what's called key tracked, meaning it's whatever note you play, it's going to match that. Um, so then that was what I did, and then I have it going into this distortion, and that's kind of what gives it the tone. So here's without the amp. You can hear it's just kind of like a dry, almost like a sine wave or a triangle wave. And then with the amp, that just distorts it and brings out that kind of sound. And then I just have that one side chain to the kick. Um, and then for the other ones, like I said, it's pretty much the same process, just with a few different things so like on this one for example the way that i made this one was i took that same patch and then i turned the frequency up a little bit and i automated it very very slightly you can see it literally just goes from 1.21 kilohertz to 1.34 kilohertz so like not even a full kilohertz um but that's what just gives it that little like subtle pitch bend i didn't want to go too crazy because like if i did like that like that doesn't really sound like something gustavo would use but yeah, so it's just that subtle little frequency modulation there. 
And then on this last one, the way I made it was basically I just took that same sound and then I added this 4-bit shaper in the filter. So it's just like an extra distortion. And then I automated the drive of that. And then I also added this little erosion here just to make it more kind of like lo-fi and just like give it more of that kind of like destroyed sound. Um, so then the next thing I'll show you here are these sort of main bases, which sound like this. So the way that I made these is it's two layers. It's this one and then this one. So the way I made this first layer was I started with a sine wave, an operator, and then I just added a little bit of white noise with the FM there. So it's just kind of like getting into the sound and giving it a little bit more of an interesting texture than it would have had if it was just a sine wave. It's a nice trick to kind of give your sounds a more interesting feel. Um, so then to give it that like pitch bend, I have this LFO on the pitch here. Um, it's on the saw down setting. The rate, I think this is actually the default rate. Um, but then I set the amount there. And yeah, it just gives it that nice kind of like cool pitch bend. Um, so then after that, I have this saturator, which has a bit of drive. And then I use the wave shaper to kind of like shape the sound. So I'll show you what this sound sounds like with no processing. It's pretty much just a sine wave. And then this saturator with the insane wave shaper. Gives it like this kind of sound, so you can hear that brings out like that white noise and gives it that more of like a textured sound, as well as like just kind of adding a lot of harmonics to the sound. The goal here is to make like a very harmonically rich sound, and then I use the amp and this NCT that you see over here, sort of like destroy it, so to speak. Um, so yeah, so this wave shaper kind of works very similarly to FM synthesis where you're just kind of like adding, you, you, you're you essentially just modulating like the harmonic content and all that kind of stuff of the sound to get it to sound sort of how you want. Um, so then after that, like I said, I use this amp. That's what sort of makes it sound more like crispy, I guess. And then I have this OTT to really bring it home. And then it's just side chains to the kick. So then the second main bass layer sounds like this. And the way I made this is pretty similar. Um, it's a little bit different. So to start off with, I used the saw four wave in operator. Um, and then that's being FM by a triangle wave. So the saw four wave is just very similar to a sine wave, actually, but just with a little bit more harmonic content. You can see there. And to actually show you this, you can see if I bring up a sine wave, it has literally just this harmonic. And then if I bring up the saw four, you can see it's that one with just these little extra ones. So yeah, it just kind of like, like I said, you know, gives it a little bit of a different sound to a sine wave, but it's still similar and it's still gonna react similarly to like the wave shaper and stuff. So then after that, I have that same LFO and I have a uh, notch filter in here as well with an envelope on it. Um, so that's just kind of like, giving it that kind of like more scoop mids kind of sound. And yeah, and then I also have the pitch bend on there, but I don't believe it's actually doing anything since we have this LFO on the pitch. I guess it is a little bit. But yeah, and then after that, I have this chorus. So this just kind of gives it, it's very subtle. The dry wet is very low. But this just helps to sort of wind it up a little bit. The thing is, like, since these two layers are sort of the lead here, um, I wanted to make them a little bit bigger and beefier, so that's why I added the chorus. Again, it's very subtle if I turn it off and then on. You can barely notice it, but it just adds a nice little bit of stereo width. Um, so then after that, I have it going into the saturator, which is, again, just like a pretty intense wave shaper. And then that's going into an OTT. And I have a side chain to the kick. So like I said, these two are pretty similar. They just sort of accentuate each other and help to complement each other. So then the last little sort of bonus round here, if you will, um, is this little arpeggio that I made, which I'll show you in a sec. It wasn't in the intro, but yeah, it's just this little extra layer I made. I tried to fit it into here, but it didn't really fit, but it was still something I wanted to talk about because I didn't want to just talk about basses because Gustavo Stein also has really beautiful, like, synth work with, like, his pads and arpeggios and all of that. So I tried to recreate one of those kind of, like, more modular synthesis sounding kind of arpeggios that he has in a lot of his tracks. Um, this is what it sounds like. 
Uh, yeah, so I think I got pretty close. Um, so the way that I made this was basically I took this F minor chord. Like I said, this was supposed to fit into everything else, so I just have an F minor because everything else is playing F all the bases. Um, and then what I did was, so here's the F minor. So I took the third, the minor third, which is G sharp, put it up an octave, and then I doubled that up an octave up from there. And then I also doubled up the root note an octave down. So this just gives us like a wider kind of place on the keyboard for the arp to arpeggiate. Um, so yeah, so then I, for the style on this arpeggiator, I set it to converge. So it's a little bit more interesting than just like up or up and down or whatever. And then I have it on 16 notes. The steps are at 2. Um, and yeah, and then as far as the synth sound goes, so the way I achieve this kind of like more modular-esque sound is just do FM synthesis. So we just have a sine wave, and then, yeah, just a bunch of sine waves here pretty much. Um, and then the second one is up an octave, and the levels are there. And that's what's giving it the kind of sound that it has. Um, so then after that, I have a little bit of chorus. Pretty straightforward. Just adds a little bit of, like, wateriness and obscures it a little bit more. Um, and then after that, I have a reverb um, and this erosion, which I can actually delete. And then after that, I actually have a ping pong delay. So I know this might sound weird to put your delay after your reverb. But in this case, I wanted to accentuate that, like, 16th note kind of rhythm. You can see we have the set to 16th notes. So I put it after there. And then we actually have another reverb. Because that first one just wasn't quite enough, and I wanted, like, the delayed reverb going into another reverb. Um, I know it might sound a little weird, but <laughs> that was that was what I did there. And then I have the side chain here. It could be side chain to the kick, like, if you want to just... I guess you could do something like that, but yeah, and then the empty EQ. Um, so that's really it for this one. You know, like I said, the main things to think about are, like, with the crunchy drums, and then the interesting bass design. And then, like, the kind of interesting arms. Um, so, like I said, that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Thank you again for watching all the way through. Um, thank you again if you didn't make it all the way through as well. Um, and, yeah, I will see you guys again tomorrow with another tutorial.